later. Okay. So I'm recording now. So I'm Drew from NWA 3D, and it's our goal to make 3D printing easy. That's why we have these 3D printing sessions. So these are unlimited um, that you'll have for the lifetime of your printer, even if it's out of warranty. We can still help you and your students 3D print because we want to make sure that they don't break down and uh, turn into some like paperweight that's sitting in the corner not working and also not to turn into like a toy factory where it's just pumping out um, little Yoda heads all the time and lightsabers. I mean Yoda and lightsabers are awesome um, but not really learning anything from that if students are just like googling stuff and downloading them. So um, they also come with lesson plan help for life too. So I'm a certified teacher and we have another certified teacher on staff as well so we're really passionate about making sure that they're getting used in the classroom. Okay. So have uh, either one of y'all 3D printed before? Uh, no. No. Awesome. So we're starting from scratch. That's good. So the process of 3D printing that we're going to talk about today is applicable to any 3D printer that you're going to use. It's basically going to be the same process. Even the industrial 3D printers where they're printing, you know, airframe parts and organs and stuff like that, like that process is still very similar to this. So there are four big steps that you have to go to. Uh, the first step is the longest and the one that's going to be the most complicated, the most difficult to do, and that is the design step, where the students are actually going to create uh, three-dimensional models. So there are lots of free applications out there that um, they can use to design. Our favorites to start with are Tinkercad. Um, dot com, which is awesome, and it works in a web browser. You don't have to install it or anything, um, and it's great to move like three-dimensional shapes around and combine them together, and uh, you can create holes and stuff really easily too to make some really advanced models. Um, the second one is Onshape, and Onshape.com as well, oh, excuse me, and that's more of a traditional CAD design program where you'll actually draw shapes and then pull them out, so that's for like your more advanced students after they kind of get the hang of Tinkercad. Okay. And that also works in a web browser and on iPads and stuff like that too. So both of those work on Chromebooks and you don't have to install anything. Um, so they're awesome. And uh, we definitely suggest starting with those and I'll send you guys all the links to these too um, in this email with this recording. So you won't have to worry about dropping them all down. Um, and then also SketchUp is really great too. SketchUp Pro works, um, but that has to be on a Windows or a Mac machine. So um, it's a little bit more advanced and you'll be creating some shapes and then be able to pull them out. It's more for architecture. Um, so it can be a little bit different if you're gonna be making like prototyping and parts and stuff like that. But if you're gonna be doing buildings, it's fantastic for that. Okay. Um, and then the best one is Fusion 360. Um, but that's normally just for junior high and high school kids um, to, to dive into. And it's definitely the most advanced, but it's the same company that makes Tinkercad. So the skills that you learn in Tinkercad are applicable to Fusion 360 and the stuff you're going to learn in that. So it, basically you can tear up through those. But you can do tons of stuff in Tinkercad and, um, and Onshape all the time. Like Tinkercad is what I, when I need to make something really quick just around the house, I, I'll make it in Tinkercad. Okay. Um, so it, it's awesome too. And you also have the digital caliper that came in the toolkit. So you can measure exact uh, sizes of things to be able to prototype them because you can print something and design it to be a tenth of a millimeter um, in uh, accuracy. So you can make some really cool prototypes um, on uh, your 3D printer. Okay. So once you have that uh, file designed, it has to be converted to the 3D printer file. And that's done in a slicing program. And the one that we use is called Cura. C-U-R-A, and it's as easy as like loading that model in there and then basically how the printer is gonna print it. So it's the settings that you're gonna set. And then you save that to the SD card, and that's how you're gonna do the third thing, which is transfer your file from your computer to the printer. So it has to be transferred there by using the little uh, SD card that comes with the printer. And you can also plug it in, uh, but we don't really recommend having it plugged in because if the computer gets unplugged, or if uh, it gets logged out, or if somebody accidentally closes the program, um, or the printer itself gets unplugged from the computer, it'll stop the print. So you'll have to go back and restart your print from scratch. And it also has to be tethered the whole time, and it could just be really annoying. So just using a little SD card, they can be anywhere. So you can have the printer in the library, and the students can all be designing in social studies, and then they can go print and stuff in the library. So they don't have to be in the same spot. Uh, and that transfer step is that third step, and then the fourth step, you're just going to use the controls on the printer to hit print. So you're going to design a file first, and then you're going to convert your file in Cura, which is called slicing, and then that's going to be transferred using the SD card to your printer, and then the last one, you're just going to hit print. Okay. So do you guys have any questions about kind of how that workflow and that process works? No. I no, not at all. Yeah, okay, awesome. So uh, let's go ahead and install Cura then. So that's on the SD card. If you want to go ahead and pop it in your computer and open it up. 
It's in the folder, it says Cura. And then you can just do the default on everything until it gets to the end and it's installed and it says, uh, like, add new machine wizard. And it's asking you to select your machine. Um, and if you uh, put this on multiple, like, student machines and stuff like that, uh, just remember that if students log into other accounts, it's profile specific. So if you install it, um, just like, you know, your bookmarks will be profile specific on different, different logins, they'll have to set it up the first time they log in on that account. So it'll remember your settings, um, but you have to set it up that first time. Okay, so when it, I'm at the point right now where it says, what kind of machine do you have? Sweet. Yeah, awesome. So uh, let me share my screen with you and open my version of Cura up. And there we go. All righty. So we're basically going to set the sizes of this area and what it's going to look like. And, uh, ah, my camera, it turned off. Can you hear me? There we yeah. go. Okay. I don't know. Just, that just turned off for some reason. That's weird. All right. Uh, so you have your printer wizard right here. So we'll go ahead and click next and we're going to click other for a type of machine. And then next. And then Mendel, M-E-N-D-E-L is the operating system. I think this must not be unplugged. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can still hear you. Okay. Maybe it just came unplugged or something. I think that's why it's it's a low battery or something. There we go. All right. So Mendel is the operating system. M-E-N-D-E-L. Man, this guy is being wild. That's okay. We don't have to look at it for a second. I'll play with it here in a second. Can you still hear me? Yeah, and I can see your screen. So. Okay, cool. So we'll click next and then finish. Woohoo! And then there are two more things that we're going to need to do. So we're going to set the size of our build area, and then we're going to set our basic settings. So uh, if you scroll over, you'll see you'll have these little paragraphs that will kind of go more in depth. Um, but we're going to talk about each one of them too. So the layer height, that's how tall each one of the layers are together. So as it's building something, layer by layer by layer, um, then when it's building those things all the way together uh, to be able to create your model. So each layer, as it's going to fuse it together, that's how close those layers are together. So 0 0.2 is 2 tenths of a millimeter, and it, that's like medium quality for this. So you can go down to 0 0.1, that's the highest quality and the closest it can be, um, which is also called 100 microns, if you've ever heard that before. And then uh, 0 0.3 is the lowest quality. So that's gonna print the fastest, but it's gonna look um, the worst. Um, I always like to print at 0 0.2. And then the shell thickness, that is going to be 0 0.8. And that needs to be a multiple of our nozzle size. And we're, that's why we're going to change our nozzle size down here to 0 0.4. Okay. And if you ever want to make this stronger, like make a stronger model, then you just keep adding 0.4 to it. So you could do like 1.2, 1.6 um, to be able to make it a pretty strong model. Um, you want to make your bottom and top thickness the same just so you have an even model all the way around. The fill density is how much is filled inside of your model. So um, for the fill density, that's gonna be uh, somewhere between five and 20% is usually good. Uh, and usually the smaller your model is gonna be, then the uh, more dense you're gonna have it. And this is just so you can save plastic without having to make stuff that's completely solid. Um, you can you can change how much is filled in. You can also do hollow models too if your model is able to do that. So you could do zero percent if uh, your model was able to print without uh, having stuff inside of it. So the print speed we don't want to go faster than fifty. So the printer can go a lot faster than that and get all the way up to like one hundred twenty about. But it's uh, less accurate when it's that fast and it's more prone to fail if it's not tuned just right. So we love to print around fifty, um, and because this is a much more accurate and more reliable print speed for any type of three D printer. So we'll leave that number at fifty, and you can go lower than that if you want it to look a little bit nicer when it's printing. But it still look pretty good at fifty. The temperature is going to be two hundred and twenty. And that's the temperature that it's going to melt the material at. And the material is called filament, and it's PLA filament. And this printer can print anything in PLA or PLA composite. Um, and PLA is polylactic acid, and it's corn sugar plastic, basically. And then the bed temperature, we're going to say zero, because it does not have a heated bed. And then for the support type, we're going to go ahead and click that and click everywhere. 
So if it ever needs supports, it will automatically generate them. Okay. And then on our diameter, we're gonna click 1.75. And then now these are all set up where we need them. So we're gonna go up to where it says machine and then we're gonna to go to where it says machine settings right here to change our build size. Did you see that one? Yep, got it. Okay, awesome. And then we're gonna change these for this width, depth, and height. We're gonna change this to 125 by 150 by 100. And then we're gonna uncheck this heated bed right here. And these are the settings that you'll wanna have uh, your printer set to. So these settings over here on the side and then this right here. And this is a screenshot that's actually on your SD card as well for you to set up Cura. And um, for setting up Cura, if you have uh, other students do it, or if you wanna put it on different machines, uh, you have this video to watch. It's on the user manual that'll walk you through step-by-step -step, that screenshot. Um, you can contact our support. And we also have a video that's just on how to set up Cura. So um, it can be a bunch of steps to make sure it's all set up right. And this is actually the first big troubleshooting part of 3D printing too, is making sure that all of these settings in Cura are all set up correctly. Because okay. if they're not, then it can cause all kinds of crazy wonky things to happen. So we'll just click OK. And then now, we are ready to load our model in. So this would be that second step. So uh, we create our 3D model and then we can load it. You can actually load an STL model from the SD card. We put a couple on there for you. So you can click load and then on the SD card, uh, you can click STL files and then you can either click the keychain or the dice, whatever you wanna do, and then hit open. And then that will open your model. And just like the robot that you probably see on there right now, you can click and move them around and you can add as many things as you want in here by just loading models as long as they're yellow. If they're gray, they're outside of the build area and they're not gonna be sliced, so the, it's just gonna ignore them. And when you move them in here, you can also go down here and rotate models side to side or make sure that the flattest part is touching. So if it's printing with barely any parts touching like this, that wouldn't be a very good way to print. You can hold the right mouse button and kind of move it around. You can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel too and see exactly where it's gonna be. So you wanna to try to get the flattest part down where it's sticking. And then the scale, if you wanna change the scale of something and you're not worried about it, something being an exact prototype, you can see the millimeter size that is gonna be right here and you can also drag this and make it bigger. So you can scale it uniform by keeping this lock locked or if you wanted to just move the X, Y, and Z, you could type those in values in right here. And this uh, one is 100, so if you wanted it to be like 50% larger, you could do 1.5. And you'll see that's gonna change the time of how long it's gonna take to print right here. So when, so I, this, when, I, bought, when I, I've got, I, I know how to rotate it, but I didn't see where that, where do you get the? Oh, the scale, that's right next to it. Okay. That's right here. Okay. I see you now. And you have to be clicked on the model for it to pop up. And then you can, you can scale stuff around. And this time is within about five to 10 minutes of how long it's actually gonna take. So it's super accurate. So we like it a lot. Okay. So once we have our model and we've got it ready to print, to save it to the SD card, you can either click right here where it says save toolpath, or if it says SD, you can just click on that and it'll automatically save it. You can also right click and save wherever you want. So you can say save G code and then choose where you save it. So I'll go to my SD card right here, and then I'll put my six-sided dice right there and make sure it's saved on there and then click save. And then that's that transfer step, that third step where we're gonna transfer it. Okay. And I encourage you to go around and play around with these settings in Cura. This is just medium quality settings. So you can change all these and play around with them. How do you know if you got your, your uh, model too tall? Will it, gray out? Will it gray out just like it does Love yes, that. that's a good question. So like if I move this really big, yep, it'll totally get gray. And you can also click to max right here to make it the maximum size. So you, she can place that anywhere on that print surface and it'll... Yep, find, find and that's where, I wish this camera was, I don't know what's going on with my weird camera right here. So there's no, need to, there's no so, need to put that at a starting point as long hmm. as it's a print area. Yeah, so like if I put this in this back corner, then it will print in the back corner on the printer. So this checkerboard area right here, that is your build surface right here that we set. And this is how big it prints. So it prints this entire box and your entire printer is pretty much made up by build area. So it's five by six by four inches. 
So right, right. pretty much the entire thing is build space. And wherever you put it in Cura, that's where it's going to print um, on your printer. And the and max automatically. Go ahead. The max height was 4.9 or something? Uh, it's about four inches. So it's 100 millimeters. Okay. So it's like 3.99 inches, something like that. Okay. So, so in, order to, in order to do the, okay, when I have this little SD card into the mm -hmm. adapter, yeah. I, I'm going to need to get like one of those, yeah, US. I mean, I have. You have a USB one. I do. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you have a USB one and a regular and one like this. So we gave you two. Two SD cards and two adapters. Okay, I get what you're saying. And you can use a little dongle. So do y'all have any questions about like Cura and how it how it works, how it looks? Um no, I mean I looks and so this is you said this is the slicer. So I've what I've done already is created it. Step. Yeah, I've created it in Tinkercad. Mm -hmm. and then I take it as an STL. STL, yes. Anything that's a dot .stl file or dot .obj, those are the two best file types that you want to you want to have it as. But when yep. you click in Cura, it'll say download for 3D printing and download as an STL file. So when it convert when in Tinkercad when it puts it to an STL file, mm -hmm. where you know where it goes? Like where would I retrieve it to open it up? Oh, just in your downloads. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you just download it the same way that you would download anything. Um, so if you have it set to your downloads or desktop or wherever it would save from, and then you would just load that, that model into Cura. Okay. So I see the load model file and then you said, okay, so now like if I wanted to save this robot thing, mm -hmm. I can go save mod model. Uh, if you want to, you have to first convert it to G code. So this is more like a pass through program where you have your file, your 3D file before, and then the after is like the recipe on how it's going to print. So um, this is, you don't really have to save it in Cura at all because you already have your 3D file saved as your STL. So if you ever need to open it again, you could change it. Um, but I think, yeah, by clicking, I think if you can click save, save model, I think that's how you can save it as an STL, if I believe. I don't really use that very much, but um, I think you can save that if I don't hide the extension. Uh, so it's going to save it as an AMF, it looks like, which means that you can only open it up in Cura again. So it, it's easier just to keep it as the STL file. And this is just basically just passing through um, Cura to be able to print on the printer. So you want to save it as the G code. And by doing that, that's where you'll do this save tool path right here. Okay. So when I hit my save tool and I pull up my NWA 3D mm -hmm. uh, on it, it says as, as a save type, it says AMF semicolon STL. So would that be both? No, you want to do where it says save toolpath right here up at the top right here. Okay. You want to use this, this shortcut. Because you want to you convert it to G code and that's what clicking right here does. And that converts it to G code because the end is going to be dot G code. Do you see that? I don't get that screen. Like I see your screen, but I don't. When I, when I hit this robot and I hit that SD at the top. Okay, so when you click SD, it's immediately just saving it straight to the SD card. So you, don't, you can skip that step. Okay. So yeah, it's detecting it. Like if I plug this, um, for instance here, if I, uh, let me eject this. And if, if I plug in my SD card drive, then like if, I, if you're using this reader, like on my Mac, then it will pop up with the SD too. But if you don't have it, then it gives you this little thing right here. So there's the SD. So then when you click SD, it automatically saves it. And you can see right here, it's saved as volume and every 3D six out of dice dot G code. Yeah. And that means that it's saved. And then if you go and open it up, you'll see that it's saved on there as that dot G code. Yeah, I have the. Because the most important part is to make sure that it's a dot G code because otherwise the printer won't be able to recognize it. Because the printer can't read STL files or AMF files. So it has to only read G code files. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just, I, when you click on, when I click on that robot, I mean, other than, cause you have the six sided die and it's six sided die is already on the end of, you know, on the USB mm -hmm. thing already. I, I don't see how that robot one gets coded into the USB. 
in my right. Well, it's the same way that you would code anything else. The robot, the, so the robot just comes as, it's kind of like the mascot. So the oh. first time you install, the robot just sits there as like the first model. It just gives you that model automatically. Um, so you can click on it and press delete if you want to get rid of it because it just gives you that model. Um, it's just like the mascot of Cura, so that's why it pops up on there. Okay. The first time that you load it. Um, cause other stuff, like when you load other files, so no matter what your file is. So for instance, like if I go into my downloads, I've got, um, like this little Christmas tree right here so I can open that. Um, and anything that you open, like this one is way too big. So I need to click on it and I need to scale it down by using the scale feature. And then I can scale it down until it turns yellow and then it'll be able to print. There we go. And now it's going to be the size that it's able to print. And you can even change it by, you don't have to just change it by like multiples of 10. So I could do like 3.222 or something like that. You can change it to whatever size you want um, to try to get it like as large as you possibly can. Like if four is too big, then maybe I could do like three, eight or something or three, seven, or try to see like how close you can get it before it can print. Oh, so close, three, three, there we go. And as long as it's yellow, then you'll be able to slice it. And it's going to be about two hours and 21 minutes. Does that make a little more sense now? So it would take two hours to print that. Um, yes. Size. And you can see up here on the top, that's how long it's going to tell you stuff takes to print. Okay. Do you have any more questions about Cura? Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know it's a bunch of info. You're the one going to be using it. <laughs> Danny's, right, the, yeah. Danny, Danny's expecting me to show this off in about a month and to be an expert. So he's sitting back thinking, I don't have to understand this because it's just you. Hey, you'll be the expert. You're going you're gonna to be. You'll be surprised. You're going to be knocking stuff out like, like in no actually, time. So. Have you actually taken an STL file and saved it in Cura as an OG file? Well, you, you can yeah so you'll take the sdl file put it in cura and then you'll it'll save in cura as a g code file that's the output that you want so you import it as an stl and then you export it as a g code but i thought don't, don't you have some sample stl files on the on the card we yeah. do yeah and there are sample g code files of the same thing so um on the sd card you'll see the stl files and we also already sliced them um, as test prints too, as G codes. So you can select them as the G codes that are already on there as well in, in the test prints folder. Oh, there's a so these are G codes. So 20 those minutes. are the STL files that were converted. To yes, so they're already converted. So um, they're already converted for the printer because the printer won't be able to see the STL files. They have to just see those. So um, we give you just a couple test ones because sometimes like Cura might be um, uh, just different issues and stuff like that. And it helps you just to have something already ready um, on the printer to, te to be able to test them. Okay, so basically this is what I would do. I would take Tinkercad, make my design, yep. convert it as an STL, or download it as an STL, mm -hmm. put it in the STL file, basically, that is on the USB stick, like move it over to that, right? No, 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 you don't have to do that. You okay. just download your STL file straight into Cura. Okay. Yeah, so you just, you just have it downloaded onto your computer or wherever you want to have it, and then you just put that straight onto Cura. Okay, and then once I get it on Cura and make sure the dimensions and everything, then I hit that SD up there. Mm -hmm. That's when it takes it and puts it to the USB stick. Yep, as a G code file. As a G code file, okay. And then you'll put that on the printer and then hit print. So it's kind of a confusing workflow. It's not as easy as just like plugging it in and it installs the drivers and you hit print. You have to like kind of go through those different steps and those different um, that process. And it, it definitely takes a little bit of time. Okay. So you think, does that make sense? Yeah. It's like converting a PDF or a Excel doc to a PDF to a yep. JPEG. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Same type of thing. It's, it's just that workflow process and like going through it. Sweet. Okay. So now that we've got it saved here, um, then let's go ahead and get our printer ready. So we have our file saved. So you can eject it. And then we're gonna print it on our printer and then check our printer out too. So Cura, as I mentioned, that's the first big troubleshooting step and making sure that those settings are all set up correctly. Um, the second big one is making sure that your machine itself is running right. And the most common thing that happens there is the plugs come unplugged. 
So when they get moved around, especially in shipping sometimes, stuff can get unplugged. So uh, go ahead and check it and make sure everything is plugged in like it should be. And my camera is being mad at me today. All right. There we go. So you want to check all these plugs that are plugged into each one of these motors. So you have your X motor, your E motor, your Y motor over here, and your Z, which is right here on the bottom. And then check all those and make sure that all the plugs and all the switches are plugged in like they should be. Okay. All right, so I'm pulling it out of it. It looks like the bottom right here. Is this supposed to be this way? No, it's definitely not. <laughs> uh oh. So um, that means that they got a little rough in uh, the FedEx shipping center. So, um, yeah, can we see the? Can you show it to me one more time? It's like there's a. Yeah. It's, it's the side without the bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like on the bottom part. So we can probably still print with it even though it's like that today and then what we can do is we can ship you that that base plate and then it's really easy to repair you you can you just take off those little bottom uh screws uh, and then you just stick them right back on there okay so yeah sorry about that sometimes fedex gets a little wild um and then if if you wouldn't mind taking a picture of that with your cell phone and texting it to me um or emailing it to me that'd be great um, just so we can have that as proof for FedEx. Do you mind doing that real quick? That'd be awesome. You can even separate it a little so you can tell it's real broken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it will still print. Um, and then we'll get you that part to be able to fix it. It looks like the printing table is solid and it's not going to ship. Yeah, it should be pretty good. That's just like the base part that kind of goes in there. Okay, can you explain the XYZ thing? Because there is one of these that's unplugged. Sure. Yeah, so you just want to check and make sure the E motor, that's this one right here. Okay. That's E. That's the one. X, that's this one right here. Okay. Both of these switches, there's also a little limit switch inside here. There's the Y. Okay. That's back here in the back in the little Y switch. Okay. And then there's the Z, which is the up and down, and that's this one right here. Okay. So did you find out which one was unplugged? It was E. Okay. So where do I plug it in at? So it plugs in right here on the side. So now we've checked it, and unfortunately we got a cracked base plate, but as I said, um, we'll make sure we get that shipped to you. And then, yeah, can you send me that picture? Yes. That you took? You can email it to me, or, or you can text it to me if that's easier too. He's, he took a picture, so he's sending it to me, and I'll send it to you. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, and then... Uh, with the, with the printer, so we know that um, this base plate then, let's check this and make sure it moves back and forth freely and this belt doesn't look all messed up. This belt should be pretty tight. Uh, Same with this one. So back and forth, you said? Yes. Okay, yeah, it moves back and forth. Okay, great. Man, this camera is being hassle today. There we go. They moving good? Yeah, they went back. Sweet. Yeah. So now we're going to do one of the most complicated parts of it, and that is making sure that the bill plate itself is level. Um, so to do that. Um, Can I ask you one question? As I yeah. move it back and forth, it feels like at one spot it little catches. Is that, is that okay? That's okay. Yeah, as it's moving back. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. It's just like the motor as it's spinning. And then can you show me the bottom part where it's broken? 
So I can I can look at that one more time because this is kind of de going to determine if we can print or not. Because I want to see exactly where that broken where it is broken. Because it might be kind of wonky trying to. No, we're good. Okay, sweet. So um, the, what I was checking is making sure that this like this pole was connected to the same piece that this is connected to, which is. So we're good. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to get just a piece of scrap paper. Just a piece of, of scrap like uh, printer paper. Okay. And that is two tenths of a millimeter. And that's the distance that we want the nozzle to be from the build plate. And that's what we're going to adjust right now by going through these settings. So um, if it's too close, it's going to like fuse the filament to the, to the platform. It can be kind of hard to get off. Um, it can also dig into your model and dig into the build plate. If it's too far away, it will warp as it cools. It'll knock your model off. It can turn into giant pile of spaghetti. So we're trying to get it to be just that right height to where it sticks layer by layer by layer by layer to form your three-dimensional shape. And that is two tenths of a millimeter from the build plate. And you can also kind of eyeball it when it starts to print too to make sure that it's printing. So um, to do that, we're gonna go ahead and tap the button. And everything is gonna be by tapping and spinning this knob. Okay. And then we're gonna spin it to where it says setup. And then we're gonna go to auto home. And then when it stops moving, we'll be able to remove the next step. It's moved back. Yep. Sweet. Okay, so that's at zero right now. So now we're going to go ahead and tap it and then click setup and then disable motors to disable them moving around. So how do I go? I tapped it. It says status screen tune settings. So that's because it's, is it still moving? No. The, the, the top. The y-axis is going down, I think. Okay, yeah, it's got to stop moving before it'll, you can move on to the next step. But while it's uh, while it's still moving, if you want to go ahead and unwrap the plastic from the filament, and get the filament ready, you can totally do that too. Okay. Um, and just when you're not using the filament, just like weed eater line or uh, or fishing line, you want to make sure it's pulled through this this hole here in the side so it doesn't come untangled. So you can choose your color and, and hit that already too if you want. While we're waiting on it. I sent to you one for you. Okay. I'm going to grab my email real quick and send that picture to you. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. I got it from you, but I got to get his email. Um, it's D Wallace at NWA3D.com. D Wallace at NWA3D.com. Yes, ma'am. Thanks. Okay. All right, awesome. So now, go ahead and tap the button. And now we can go back to setup. Okay. And then disable motors, because it stopped moving now. And then, what we're going to do is, I'm going to be picking mine up and kind of moving it around to show you the different parts, but you want to keep yours flat on the table, because it can actually move the z-axis up and down, and we don't want that to happen. So, um, what we're going to do is, we're going to move this over here, and then we're going to move this to this front corner, like that but not to where it's in the way of this clip right here. Where's the back clip on yours? Uh, you'll have the, the clip right here and then the back clip's in the opposite corner. Opposite corner, okay. Yeah. As long, it could be on any side on the back as long as it just moves freely past this pole, this pole right here. 
the z-axis gantry right okay so you want the black in the upper right right yeah yep right here yep is that where you got it yep okay awesome and then now we're going to grab our paper and have it folded in half and then we're going to slide it between the nozzle and the uh the build surface and that build surface is what says nwa 3d that's what's clipped down because you can actually remove the build surface when you're done with your model to be able to pop them off okay so if i cannot get the paper underneath of that so that's totally fine that just means that it's a little bit too close and we're going to adjust that here in a second so you can actually push down on the build plate with like two fingers and then push the paper underneath there until it goes and then you'll get it under there I still can't get it. He's going to try it. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you just have to push the bill plate down because it's spring loaded. And then that's what we're going to adjust those springs right now. And this camera, don't you come unplugged? This camera's mad at me today. Okay, we've got it underneath. This is like a feeler gauge. It's like a feeler gauge. So he's going to show you how to adjust the calibrate. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely, it's exactly like a feeler gauge. Just instead of having a feeler gauge, we're using the paper. Okay. Is so it under there? Yes. Awesome. So we're going to adjust uh, these little wing nuts like down here on the bottom. And like I said, I'm going to be moving mine around, but you don't want to move yours. You want to keep it flat. And if you tighten this, it's going to pull this down and make it looser on top. And if you loosen this, it's going to push it up and make it tighter on top. So it's kind of counterintuitive. So if you turn this on the bottom, if you turn it to the left or counterclockwise, it's going to make it looser on top. And then until you can move that paper and drag it and feel a lot of tension on the paper, like right before the paper starts to buckle. That's how close you want it to be. So mine's still way too loose. So I'm going to go ahead and turn mine the other way or clockwise till it gets tighter. So turn it a little bit and then test it and turn it a little bit and then test it and then turn it a little bit and then test it until you get it feeling and dragging like you want on that, on that front corner. And you want to feel it dragging quite a bit. And I know. It's kind of tricky to get to there. That's why it helps to go like really small increments. Okay, so All right. This well, camera. I'm going to remove my camera. <laughs> this thing is being wild right now. Assembled, so there was no tension on that spring. Okay. So now it's, now you can feel it. You feel it. So now, because it was like, so now it's starting. You can feel the tension. Feel how it's starting to be. Okay. Tired. Yeah. Now pull the paper until it's. Paper till it comes loose. Pretty close. I would. I'd do it so you can see. So, can you drag it? Can you feel that paper dragging? Yeah, I can feel it dragging. You want to feel it dragging quite a bit with quite a bit of tension. Like not so much that it doesn't move at all, but you want to feel it dragging. So how about inserting the paper after that? Should you have to push down? Like you might have to. Yeah. You just, it, the, the important part is when the paper's underneath there, then you can drag it. And if, you feel pull it. Yours out, if you pull yours out right now, would you have to push down? It won't go back in there. Okay, so she's real close. Yeah. Okay, sweet. And then you can now move this whole plate down here, and we're going to do the same thing for this back one right here. And we want to feel about the same amount of tension on this back one that we felt on the other one. So, like, this one is way looser, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten it and get it tighter. And go a little bit tighter. There we go, until we feel it dragging. So now you're, so you're doing the tension. You're basically setting the tension on all four corners here. Or the, well. Are you in the back right or the back left? I am in the back right, if you're looking at the printer. So I'm on the same side as the other wing nut is, because there's only three wing nuts. So there's two on this side and one on the inside. And we're adjusting these two on the outside first. There you go, same thing. There you go. Now use the other. 
push down. Okay. Now it's under there. Now you can. Once she gets this initial calibration, will she need to do this every build, do you think? Just no, that's a good question. Yeah, so it's only when it messes up. So only like every couple of weeks, or if you move it around a lot, like that's why we do it after shipping because it just gets jostled after shipping and stuff like that. Right. Right. You won't have to do it very much. Once you get the hang of it too, it'll be really fast. Right. Okay, I got that back corner. Right. Sweet, and then now we're gonna do the inside corner. Man, my camera, my camera despises me right now. So we're going to move it to the inside corner, uh, which is this one. So we're going to push it to the inside. And that can be kind of tricky to get to, though. So you might want to pull the plate out, and then you can reach in and kind of adjust this one a little bit, and then pull it back, and then test it, and then pull it out, and then kind of reach in there and adjust that inside one. And then kind of pull it back and adjust it. And pull it out and kind of adjust that inside one a little bit, and pull it back and then test it. So you can feel it dragging. But mine's still not dragging yet, so I'm going to go adjust a little bit more, make it a little bit tighter. There we go. Now I feel the tension on there. And I'm going to take this apart. So the trick is to try to get it on that triangle to feel like each part of that triangle um, to have the tension about the same. So if one of them gets really tight, the other two will be loose and vice versa. So it can be kind of weird and awkward when you're moving it around. Sorry, I had to run and get some duct tape because every time I pulled, I felt like I was separating the bottom from the oh. <laughs> Yeah, you can, you can tape it if you want. So do you think you got a level? Almost, real close. Okay, awesome. So what's the things that go wear out the most on these, the belts or more the nozzles clogging and stuff like that? Uh, so we've had these in schools now about two and a half years and the most common issue comes from leaving them on and heating filament in it without it printing. And that causes problems with this tube right here and the connection of this tube to the nozzle, especially if it's not printing something. So if you keep it unplugged um, when you're not printing stuff, that's like the, one of the best maintenance things um, that you can do. And also when uh, you unload filament, we do what's called a soft pull, which I'm gonna show you here in a second. And that can also cut way down on those type of things that have happened. Um, the belts don't really wear it down because they're just rubber. Um, and if they do wear down, then um, we can definitely help you out with the replacement. And that's the thing, too, with the uh, no questions, that's warranty that you guys have. Like, literally anything that happens is covered. So if students cut all the belts on there, like, that's covered under warranty. Um, it can't be voided at all. Uh, and that whole first year. We're not going to be touching it for a while until Mr. <laughs> exactly who's touching it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, like, the base plate and all that is completely covered. So... That's why we got your bag. Okay, I think it's all level. Yeah, okay, sweet. So now we are ready to load the filament in it. So we have to build this, which is the spool holder. Have you guys built that yet? He just did on the side rope. Sweet, yeah, perfect. So I'll go ahead and put it mine together real quick. And then, yeah, grab a uh, roll of filament that you want to use. Okay. Will it be, will it unroll from the bottom or the top? Uh, it's kind of like the great toilet paper debate. It's up to all right, you. All right, I agree. I agree. <laughs> I 
Um, I, I think it – I'm relying, like, off from the top because I think it feeds in a little bit um, better. And it does, sometimes it can unspool a little bit, but it'll still feed in from the bottom. So it's fine. And some of the, like, larger printers feed in from the bottom just fine. So it's really up to you. And it just fits on that small little rod there, that threaded rod? Yeah. Yeah, just like a, just like a wheel. Okay, just through the big hole there. No, there's nothing to go. Okay. Nope. Yeah, and you just want to make sure that um, – my camera's maybe working. How much is it hating me? It was a second ago. There we go. Yeah, you just want to make sure that it's pulled through this hole here in the side when you're not using it. So like one of these holes, just so when you're not using it. So, okay. So it doesn't unravel on the spool. Exactly, yeah, just like weed eater line. Right. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take it out of this little hole and feed it into the printer. So we'll take it out of that hole and then clip the end of it off into kind of a point and that also clips off any like gunk and stuff that might be on the end of the filament and then that is what we're going to feed into the printer and it feeds in right here into this part so so it's going to feed right into this hole right here so when you squeeze this little lever you'll push it through this hole and then all the way through this white tube all the way through until it won't go anymore so you're kind of feeding it in and having it at a point and kind of wiggling a little bit helps it to get it through that first point. And then it'll push all the way through. So it'll go about a foot inside of there to feed it all the way through until it won't go anymore. All right, one, one oh. second here. I can't get it to cut. Or what are you, are you using this little? Yeah, just the little clippers. Yeah, they come in the, in the toolkit. Where's the other bag? There they are. Sorry, we had the wrong, we had the- Okay, it's fine. It's no big deal. Okay. Oh, this hole right next to that rod. Oh, baby. You gotta wiggle it. I'll do it right here. So she needs to get it all the way. Yeah, she can go all the way through that white tube. All the way through the white tube, past that feed gear? Yep. All the way down past the feed gear, all the way through the white tube until it doesn't move anymore. All right. You think you got it? No, almost. She's okay. Yeah, it goes, it'll go pretty far in there. She doesn't want to break her machine. <laughs> hey, you can't break anything that we can't help you fix. <laughs> right, so that feed gear's got tension on it. Oh, you got it. Let me see that. Oh, oh, you got pinched it. Oh, it's spring loaded. There we go. Okay, so I see so it in all the way down. All the way in the way. All right. Okay. It's got it. Okay, sweet. So now what we're gonna do is we can pull that paper out. And then we are going to lift this up um, to be able to like push the filament through. So I can kind of show you um, how to make sure that if something's like to clear out the clog that might be in there, like to get out another color and also how to remove it. So to do that, we're going to tap on the button and then we're going to click setup or excuse me, control. Sorry. The one right below that. And then go down to where it says move axis and then tap that. <coughs> And then we're gonna move one mm, one millimeter. And then we're gonna move the Z axis and then spin that to about like 20 or 30. And you'll see that will raise it up. It's raising. And now that it's raised up, we're gonna go ahead and tap the button. Okay. And then we're gonna to go to setup. And then we're gonna to go to where it says preheat PLA. And you'll see right underneath that, there's that preheat soft pull. And that's what you'll do when you remove filament. So loading filament, you'll do preheat PLA and preheat soft pull to remove it. And PLA, that's that material that it uses that we talked about. And that is gonna heat it up to 220. And that's enough to melt it and push it through. The preheat soft pull, that will heat it up to where it only says 100 right here. So then when you see both numbers read 100, 
Then you'll pull the filament out, and that will pull out any gunk that might be stuck inside of the end. And it's like changing the oil in a car. So it helps to just keep it refreshed and keep it nice when you're changing the filament. But you don't have to remove the filament when you turn the printer off, just only when you're changing filament. Okay. And you'll see that number as this number's going up uh, on the printer itself. When that number gets up to 220, then we're going to squeeze this, this lever right here and then push a little bit more filament through. And then you'll see the filament coming out of the end of the nozzle right there. And the only part that gets hot is the nozzle. Like this part doesn't get hot at all. Even this protective part around the nozzle, this, even this protective coating right here doesn't get super hot. You can still touch it, just not the nozzle itself. That's the only part that gets really hot. It's like a hot glue gun. I know plenty of those. And it shouldn't take too long to heat up. And sometimes it might go up and down a little bit as it's getting up to the temperature. It's at 176. Okay, sweet. And then we can also take our SD card while it's heating up, and you can put that in the front of your printer to load it. And it loads right here underneath this little knob. It'll go in a little SD card slot right there, and you can click it in there. <clears throat> 216. Sweet. All right. It's at 220. Sweet. And I've got the card in. So. And then when you just squeeze it, you can push a little bit. And then you'll see the filament coming out of the end of the nozzle, just like mine. And then you can reach in with the tweezers or the pliers or your tools to grab the filament off so you're not reaching in with your fingers to get burned. And then you can pull it off. And the filament cools right away. But the nozzle is about 500 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's really hot. Because everything on here is Celsius. So it's 220 Celsius. Okay. Got it? Sweet. Okay, so go ahead and unplug it. So. The reason that we did that is the same reason that we talked about before is never leave it on and heated without it running. So it can print for like 200 hours straight. That's totally fine. But if let's say some students change the filament out, the bell rings, and then they leave and they forget to unplug it or to cool it down, then it'll stay in there and that will bake that PLA filament because it's made from corn. It's made from biodegradable material. It'll just carbonize inside the nozzle and we can help you get that clog out. Um, and you can contact us if that happens, but um, you can also get it by, out by just doing like a soft pull. A lot of times that will get it um, and then like forcing it back through just like we loaded it and just doing that a couple times can also help to clear it. So um, that's why we just go ahead and unplug it just because, you know, we're not starting to print right away. We just want to make sure that if we're not using it, we have it unplugged. Okay. Uh, so now we're ready to print. So to print, you just plug it in. And then we have our SD card in, we have our filament loaded, everything's ready to go. So all we have to do is tap the button, go down to where it says print from SD, and you'll use refresh SD card if you put the SD card in when it's on. So we'll just go to print from SD though. And then now you can select your print. So here's my six sided dice that I saved. And yours, if you save the robot, it'll say Ultimate or Robot. And then you just tap it. And then when you tap it, it's, whoop, there we go. And then when you tap it, it's going to heat up to the printing temperature. It's going to zero itself out in the corner. And then the robot is just going to print layer by layer by layer by layer. And you want to watch those first couple layers and make sure that they're sticking and the bill plate is level. And that's how you might even do a couple little adjustments while the first layers are printing. You can totally do like a hot adjustment where you just kind of turn these a tiny bit while it's printing to make sure it's coming out really well. Because you're looking for the filament to coming out in like a straight line, like a 90 degree angle 
from the nozzle. So if the nozzle's right here, the filament's coming out like in a straight line as it's moving around. Move, yeah. Is it moving? Sweet. So that's what mine's doing right now, too. It's zeroing out, getting ready to go. Sometimes it takes a second for the pressure to build up, but then you'll see the filament coming out just like that and stick into the bill plate. So do you see it sticking? Yeah, it's like a little... It's like a little line is what it looked like. It's blue, it's blue on blue. It's a little difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does it look like it's coming out? Yeah, this robot must have a real small base. Yeah, it's pretty small. Depending on how you scaled it too, it could get even smaller. How long did it sell it to say it was gonna print? Um, honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you see it sticking, then that means you leveled it right, and you're good to go. Yeah, it looks like it's sticking. That's awesome. Good job. Well, that's all I got, y'all. So, do you have any more questions for me? Um, no. I mean, not right now. Like I said, we'll just see how the first one goes. And yeah, that's why we're here. <laughs> we'll have to adjust, and we'll uh, see how that goes from there. Sure. Yeah, sounds great. So I'll send you um, this video as well, and then I'll also um, put in a request to make sure that we get your base plate sent to you, and we'll set up a time to help you install that again too. And are, you're going to be here Monday and Tuesday, right? Yeah, we'll be here Monday. I'm around. I mean, I can always come in. I mean, I'm, okay. I. Because yeah. we ship, we can ship it. Um, let's see. I think FedEx hasn't come yet. I don't think FedEx has come today yet. So we could we could possibly get it out today, and then um, we can help you get it installed on like Tuesday, or if not, we can just do it when you come back. Okay. No, I mean like I'm. A, I mean I only live about three minutes away from the school, and I can always come into the school. So okay. Yeah, um, it's up to you the then. The difference is is that by Tuesday the, the custodians will be gone. So um, for me to because it goes into our uh, purchasing spot, and then they. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so I'll send you the tracking number then and then hopefully it'll be there in time. Okay. And if not, we'll we'll get it figured out. So. Okay. All right. Well you guys have a good weekend. See All you right. later. Thank you very much. You bet. See ya.